all right hello and welcome to my youtube channel so this will be my first video on a series of video that i'll be making <clears throat> so these videos would um contain cad tutorials for solidworks uh this is the object that we'll be making today uh so for this one this is my school uh, requirement this is a uh, quiz three as you can see over here <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah, I'll be I'll try and recreate this in um, my SolidWorks. I've already done this, so yeah, we'll just fly through it, and uh, I'll give you guys um, more info about it. All right. So the thing that we have here is we have a solid object, um, a few holes, and some chamfers. So the main <clears throat> the main commands that we'll be using would be um, extrude and chamfer, as you can see here. All right, so let's open up our SolidWorks. Oops, I've already done it. <laughs> yeah, so this is um, this is our object. Um, all right, so we'll try and recreate that. We can see here. All right, cool. Let's close that. We'll start off a new file. Um, we'll start off a new part. All right, and it says here that it is in inches, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it is in inches. Uh, so. Quotation marks are for inches, and apostrophes are for feet. Okay, so let's start off by changing the MMGS to IPS, which is inches and seconds. And let's start off with the top lane. So first off, this is what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to draw this um, shape, the perimeter of this shape, right? And we're going to extrude that. And from there, from the extrusion, we are going to chamfer it. So that's basically it. Right? So no more drilling holes. So let's start off in the top plane, sketch there, and we'll make it as our normal. All right, that went fully retorted. Um, let's do that. So that, okay. So this is what we would also always want to see, wherein we have an L shape for the um, these red arrows all right so let's start off by making a rectangle all right so let's start off by making a rectangle here in the center all right we can have it as any um, as any sort of dimension that we want because we are still going to define it with our dimension so for this one we have a six inch six inch length Right, so that's six inches, and then for this part, um, it doesn't really show. <clears throat> it doesn't really show the um, the length of this point to this point. So instead, it's given us a radius. So it's a one point two five. We'll times that by two. So that's two point five. Right, one point two five times two. So two point five. So this is two point five. All right. And we're going to make, wait, we're going to move this here. And we're going to take the midpoint of this rectangle and this center of origin. And we're going to make them coincident. All right. So now it's all fixed. Say, okay. We're going to do um, a circle here. We could also do an arc, but I'm much more comfortable with a circle and just trim it at the end. So let's create a circle there. Doesn't matter how how big that circle be. Um, and we're going to take this point, yeah, and this line, and we're gonna say we're gonna set the relations as tangent. So <clears throat> so relations are basically set of rules that are in uh, SolidWorks. So all of these. Um, lines and, and circles they all have relations if they're black if they're blue then that means they're undefined and they don't have that much of relations yet and so they can still move around as you can see here right you can still move this circle around but this rectangle you can't move around all right so that's just basically it for relations that's why relations are so important um, because in SOLIDWORKS, you mainly deal with 3D stuff, and if you can still move around, like the edges and the, and the corners, 
when it's already in 3D form, then that can cause a lot of problems because um, that would mean your 3D object would keep on deforming every time you try and move the object, right? So we want our sketches to be flow defined before we make them into 3D as much as we can, right? So let's, uh, this is already defined. We'll also define this circle and that line there and we'll say they, they are tangent, right? So this, this, and yeah, just for, um, because you could still increase the size, right? Right, so let's just take this and this and let's say that they are tangent, all right? Automatically, that becomes 1.25, right? So if we're gonna take this, oh wait, no. One more thing that I would like to change every time is the ANSI. So don't mind me, this is just for my preference. Um, ANSI is a, a way of dimensioning, which is different from ISO. Um, because you get this, it's much more cleaner, I think. So uh, there you go, it's 2.5. We can make that and uh, make that as our radius and it becomes 1.25. Same way goes for here. All right, so once we're done with that, Let's start trimming. Uh, we can do that by clicking here on Trim Entity. So we're going to trim the corner. And we're going to trim the inside of the circle. Notice how the moment that we trimmed everything, um, all these corners and everything, they started, um, uh, all these relations started getting lost. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this, Control, Hold Control and press Origin. We're going to make them horizontal, right? And we're going to take the arc and the origin, and we're going to say that they are okay, midpoint, right? So now that's done. Wait, you can still move this. All right, cool. You can do that by setting this as a dimension of All right, so we have a dimension of six, 2.5. Oops, nope, 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 That's a big mistake, sorry. We'll just set this dimension, the dimension from this point, from this point to that line, and we're gonna say that they are six. All right, so that's that. That's what we want. Next, we're going to extrude this, all right? So how far do we want it to be extruded? We want it to be extruded by half an inch, right? So we're gonna put 0 0.5, all right? So that's 0 0.5, and there you go. We have our basic shape right there, right? Now all we need to do is to drill some holes and to chamfer. Oh wait, no. You know what we could have done? We could have done the holes earlier. So instead of drilling holes um, like before, we could have just taken these, right? And defined this circle. Let's have that circle as one. How big is that circle? I'm sorry, I'm a bit retarded right here. Um, I can't. There you go. It's poof. I was looking at this. I was looking at this um, drawing, but it was actually all in here all along. So it's five eighths. So five eighths is um. Let's calculate that. Five divided by eight is zero point six three five. Zero point six three five. All right. So it became that big. And we can have that and we can have smart dimensions so from this point all the way to this circle you can have that as 1.25 all right so it's already there um hmm. what else do we need all right so once this circle is in place we can have it as a linear sketch pattern we can press the linear sketch pattern and we're going to pattern this along the x-axis, all right? So uh, 
we want four of these, or four of these, right? And we want them to be spaced out one inch. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, right. We didn't select the figure. So we need to select the figure first. And then we can say that we want them to be one inch apart. All right. So they're one inch apart, uh, all of these. So the center of this, of this circle to the center of that circle is one inch. And we want them to repeat four times. All right. So that's done. Um, a, a great way of knowing, a great way of knowing how this circle is still undefined is by moving it around. You see how it's still moving around? All right, so we don't want that. We want to define that as one. And there you go. It's all black. It means they're all defined, all right? So now we're going to extrude that, picking this. Extrude that by 0 0.5 inch, so half an inch. All right, and there you go. We don't have to drill holes anymore. So uh, we already have these down, right? Right, cool, cool, cool. And now we can do chamfers. So as you can see here, this chamfer is um, overpowering this chamfer, right? So let's start off with the outer chamfer here, like the circle. So let's start off with this chamfer. We can do that by going under fillet. There is a drop down uh, menu and we can press on chamfer. And let me just wait for it to load. Once that's down, we can input the dimensions that we have here. So this, this is three and a half, no, three fourths of an inch. So three fourths is an, of an inch is 0 0.75, and this is 1.25. So if we minus 0 0.75 to 1.25, we get 5, 0 0.5, right? All right. So that means the horizontal distance from this point to this point is 0.5, right? It's not given here. We're just, we're just using a bit of math now, all right? Um, so the horizontal distance is 0.5, okay? And now it tells us that the vertical distance from this point to that point is 0.25, one fourth of an inch. As you can see here, right? Does that does that make sense? <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense, right? So we're gonna press on this distance and distance, right? And we're since they're not symmetric, as you can see. So this is zero point two five, and this is one point five, a uh, zero point five. So now we're gonna make them as asymmetric. So they're not symmetric, right? <clears throat> and in here for D1, D1 is, wait, let me just check what D1 is. Right, so D1 would be the, uh, D1 would be the vertical length, right? The vertical distance. So vertical distance is 0 0.35. So let's, let's, let's input that, 0 0.25. All right, and the, Horizontal distance is 0 0.5. There you go. All right? So again, we're going to go to chamfer, click on distance, on distance, and then asymmetric, 0 0.25 inches and 0 0.5 inches. Right? So we have that. And just to make sure, let's, uh, let's measure this. Let's measure this um, radius. Right? So we can do that by selecting front plane. Oh, actually, let's try and dimension it now. Oops, let's try and give this a dimension now. Yep, we can. All right, so this is what we're, what we're gonna do. We're gonna press on top lane, sketch on that, and select the whole thing. All right, select this, this, and this basically, and convert entities, all right? So that's done. And then there we can, right, 
so here we can measure the radius. So it's 0 0.75, as you can see, 3 fourths, 0 0.75, all right? That's done, exit sketch, all right? Let's delete that sketch because it's only for um, testing if it's the correct um, dimension that we inputted, uh, all right? And now we're gonna do this chamfer here, all right? So we go to features, we select on, um, Fillet under fillet we have chamfer, right? And for that we have three eighths as our vertical distance, and we have one point two five as our horizontal distance, right? So we are going to select this. Okay, it automatically selects everything that is adjacent or in tangent with this line. Right, <clears throat> and we're gonna pick a uh, distance distance again so they're asymmetric. So, again, the vertical distance would be 3 eighths, so 3 eighths would be 0 0.635 if I'm not mistaken. Right, oh wait, no, it's 0 0.375. Sorry, 0 0.375. All right, so we have that there. And here we have D2 as 1.25. So 1 and 1 fourth. Wait, I wasn't typing. 0 0.35, 125. There you go. So now it looks something like that once you start cutting it. Which makes sense because this is pretty small. Right? So let's do that. And there you go. This is our quiz number three. We're done. It looks kind of like this. Right? That's good to go. So in this, um, in this video, you learned about extruding and a bit of chamfering, right? As you can see here, practice, extrude, and chamfer. Right. So that's it for our video, and I'll see you on the next one.